Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today with the attorney Margaret W. Wong, who has been working on this field of the immigration for over 45 years. And uh, it's a celebration. It's a good adventure that she started back in 1977 with only one desk and just by herself, uh, trying to see what she would do for people, how she could help people across the country or maybe just across the city at that moment. But then uh, she became uh, the attorney of a major law firm in the United States of America, which has offices in nine cities of the United States and has been helping about 6,000 families per year. So uh, thank you so much for joining us today. And thanks uh, to Ms. Wong for having us in this um, noon uh, so that we can talk about immigration, so that we can talk about many stuff that is important for everybody in the United States of America. Good, mo uh, good afternoon, Ms. Wong. How are you doing today? I'm very good, and thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for starting this adventure uh, over 45 years ago. Um, were you scared back then? Uh, no, because in those days we have no Google, no, like nothing. And also being foreign, being Chinese, in those days, not only do we not have too many Chinese going to law school, we also don't really have women going to law school. So I don't know enough to be scared. And I keep getting fired from my job. So I figure, oh, you know, at least if I start on my own, I didn't even think starting on my own. I just thought I need some job. You know, I couldn't just get keep getting fired. So I started in February of this year, which is now is my 25th year of passing the bar. Uh, because in those days, even though we also took the bar in July, the last week of July, it's always the last week of July till now, young lawyers take the bar the last week of July and in February. So in my days, even though it's the same last week, because there's no phone, I mean, the phone is still the rotary phone. So we have to sit around a phone by midnight of the bar of the bar results and we have to call the new york times the washington post because they get the press release with all the names who pass so we'll all have to sit there and wait because the students are recording the the newspapers to see if their name is there and it will help each other because you maximize five names so all of us will help each other see who pass and i still remember that moment when my friend called me and said hey you pass i'm like oh what a waste. I mean, what a beautiful seven years. And then we have to get my green card after that because um, it takes seven years to finish law school. So I got my green card from looking for a job and then citizenship. So it's a long journey. So it was very nice. And thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And we start with the first question of today, uh, but not uh, forgetting to call the phone number 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. And I will start by asking a lot of questions that we have here. Uh, is a person that is actually in Bangladesh, but uh, this is what this person says. Uh, I am from Bangladesh and my lover is from the United States, Ohio. Uh, we're going to meet and marry in this April, hopefully. We know each other for now more than two years. Can't wait to meet him finally. COVID made things harder, of course. It will be uh, for the first time meeting and marrying for both of us. Uh, we would like to hire a lawyer for our case who can provide us with the real information, guide us with visa works interview. We would love to be together as soon as possible. What can we do? Our plan is to get married here then he will return back and apply for my immigration or whatever it needs to be uh, for us to be together. Um, <clears throat> what is the best way to do it? Okay, there are two ways to do these type of cases. I presume he's uh, he's the American citizen. You are stuck in Bangladesh. I don't know if you ever came to America or if this is the first time you met because it seemed like you knew each other for two years. There are two ways to do it. If you have never, never met, you need to at least meet once. And since you could not come to America, he has to go to Bangladesh to meet with you. He can also do a fiancé visa. That's a K-1 visa. K-1 
one visa really started at around the year 2000 to make things faster uh, under the uh, April um, 2001, uh, that law. So, um, but since you're getting married anyway, uh, you might as well do a marriage case. So there are two steps. Number one, you have to file the I-130. And then once the visa in the third last page, of, in the olden days, I-130 is only three pages. Now it's like 15 pages. So on the last third page of the visa application, you need to say Bangladesh. Um, because they have been asked, where is the alien? You said in, in Dhaka, Bangladesh. And then they will have to go. American embassy will have to interview you. So the second step is you have to pay the National Visa Center. That's easy. Under Trump, it takes four or five months to get to the NBC. Now it takes only six or seven days. Once it goes to NBC, your husband by then will have to give one year tax return. Some American embassy wants three. Uh, a lot of people on South China want three year tax return. And to make sure at that time, make sure your husband found married and separate or married and joined. It could be joined because you have no tax ID number or social security number. Don't say single. There's a lot of bookkeepers or CPA because you're not here, they're still single. Once your tax return is single, the visa will be denied. Then you have, so I would say the whole process took about one, one and a half years because of the virus. There was a time that it takes only six to nine months. Hopefully it take maybe one year to three months and one to three months one year and one year to three months and then you go to the interview if he was divorced make sure you know why he was divorced it was never married make sure you know that if he has legitimate children make sure you know their names because sometimes especially from countries that's very difficult to get tourist visa which is Bangladesh, uh they ask a lot of questions about the bona fide relationship so if everything is approved you come to america and at that time you pay the third green card fee there's a new fee that started only about four or five years ago, again, under Trump, or even at the last years of Obama. In the olden days, you just pay the visa application fee, the $120, and the 335 325 Now you have to pay the $220. Um, it probably will go up. But good luck to you. It's not that hard. I don't necessarily think you even need a lawyer unless it's complicated because a lot of complicated comes up with, I already have a child with you and I came to America and married someone else. Now I go back and remarry you. Those are more complicated. If it's the first time both of you are married, it's not complicated. It's a matter of filling out the correct form, following strict instructions. If it's rejected, you do a refile. It's not difficult. And good luck to you. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And this person is adding that she has a white passport. Is that a different passport or some kind of passport? White passport in the Chinese means by pisu. That means that you have been in America, you have filed for asylum. So I don't know uh, why you have a white passport, because if you were never here, uh, you never met, he's in Ohio. So make sure... Uh, how you have to, during the interview, uh, they're going to ask you questions. How do you know he's right for you because you have never met? And also you only talked on the phone for two years. Make sure you keep records of all the, in the olden days, we use calling cards. So my clients were going with boxes of boxes of the calling cards. Now it's easier. Now you have Facebook, you have, you know, WeChat, you have all sorts of stuff. Make sure you kept records of all that. And also if you don't, if he's not from Bangladesh, if he doesn't speak your language, then how do you fall in love because you don't speak with each other? So these are questions they're going to ask. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this answer. And don't forget that you can call Ms. Wong and make an appointment with her uh, just to the phone number 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984. Now this next person is from Indonesia or Indonesia. And this person says, I am from Indonesia. I want to migrate to the United States, but I don't know how. I have one daughter. My husband passed away five years ago. I want to move and work there. Could you tell me what kind of procedure I have to make? I have a daughter and I am widow. My husband passed five years ago. Uh, I'm self-employed, a supplier. I heard about... EB3 on skill job. Is there any opportunity uh, for me to get it? 
Uh, EB3, is, uh, it, that's what we are talking about. New law came in saying that national interest waiver and O visa, NIW is an entrepreneur visa. Um, actually, they just added entrepreneur and tech, uh, and tech cases. That's an EB2. So now I'm glad you asked about EB3. EB3, there are two types of EB3. One is skilled job. Don't tell me you're unskilled. The fact that you survive, you raise your daughter alone in a very, you know, difficult country, um, you're not unskilled, I don't think. So uh, there are two types of EB3. One is skilled, one is unskilled. Skilled means that I'm a chef, I'm a cook, that's skilled. Um, waitress, waiters cannot do EB3 or even EB2. Uh, EB3 unskilled means as other workers. So EB2, EB3 skilled means that even though it's not a professional job, but it's very much, uh, you can be a pizza maker. That's a skilled EB3, all right? So it depends. Um, so I don't necessarily think you think you should be unskilled. And a lot of times as lawyers, and I've been around a long time, 45 years doing this. So uh, most lawyers my age or a little bit my generation will talk to you and see if you're EB3 or other workers. Nowadays, because not too many people are doing other workers now, the priority, yes, there is a EB3 case, either other workers or skilled workers, that you can get a green card in about three or half or four years. Then you come straight with your daughter with a green card. So by then she's only, she's eight, so it takes about four years. So it's about, she'll be 12 years old. So the daughter, as long as she comes with you before 21, she'll get it. So to do the EB3, either other worker or skill, you need a job offer. Before May of 2005, like, uh, for example, I own a McDonald's. I would hire, say, I need 10 people or 50 people because I can find other aliens to substitute for my approved labor cert in those days. Now it's per. But nowadays you couldn't. So you need to know an employer who's willing to give you a future prospective job offer, then we have to advertise for a job, we have to uh, look at the prevailing wage, we have to look at tax return, but it's not a difficult case. But you need a job offer, you need a nice employer who's not gonna sell his business, because once a business is sold, I do have employers like that, you need to um, then in the uh, purchase and sale, if they are nice, they should say, I would like you to hire this person that I'm helping to give a job offer to, but they have to hire them for at least six months after you get the green card. And you absolutely need to work for them, otherwise it became a fraud case. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this answer. And this is a very interesting question. So um, please just give Ms. Wong a call, uh, make an appointment. The phone number is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984 and she will be happy to answer your questions so uh don't be shy just give us a call 216-279-3984 216-279-3984 miss one this next question is i entered through mexico uh i am venezuelan my boyfriend is filing asylum i entered four months ago and i am pregnant now uh, would it be a problem if I ask for Medicaid, I don't have a work permit or social security number? I would not ask for it because if you live in New York, New York has a very good uh, protection program. But uh, places like Ohio, Atlanta, I don't even think you'll qualify. I would not ask for it because you don't have a social, don't have a work permit. Um, the boyfriend filed for asylum. Um, have nothing to do with you because it's only a boyfriend, but I would not. Medicaid is welfare, right? Because I always get Medicaid and Medicare mixed up. I think Medicare is when you're 65 years old because I think I'm on Medicare. Um, so yeah, it depends. Medicare is for 65 years old and Medicaid is for babies. Right. Oh, oh. if it's chair, if it's uh, emergency birth, it's okay. If the USC born citizen, it's okay, but I would not even get cash benefit because when you go to court, they're going to ask that specific question. But as a USC born child, he can get wake. But uh, but on the form, make sure you don't say you have papers or you're American citizen because that's what the judges are going to check. Now the judges are getting very sophisticated, but you cannot get it. So the answer is you cannot get Medicaid, but the baby could. 
Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. We have a lot of questions. Uh, people have seen your news and your website, and they are asking questions right now. And this is a person from Thailand and is asking, I have questions regarding to uh, H-1B visa. Uh, how can I get it? Yes. Number one, you need a job offer. That job offer doesn't have to be a permanent job offer. It could be a temporary job offer. It could be both. Uh, by March 1st, uh, the company needs to register with $10 on the USCIS.gov web uh, for your name and the and the uh, company's name and, and just list a short, list a short salary um, name of business, uh, you know, very, very general information. By the end of March, uh, the USCIS will tell your company if you got into a lottery. Now you'll need a lawyer to file the H-1B. There are four steps to H-1B, uh, prevailing wage, job posting, um, you know, and then you file the paper, paperwork. You should get it out. Depends. Uh, there were that was a year that you, they'll give you five days. Before five days, there was a day a year that you have to get in by midnight of April first. If you get in too early, they reject. If you get in too late, you're not into the system. It's just a mess. But now it's a better system. Um, you need a job offer to simplify the answer. Thank you so much, Miss Wong. And we have another very interesting question. This is a family-based uh, question. And this person says, my daughter is citizen of the United States. I have double nationality, but I enter on ESTA. She wants to file for me the family petition. Uh, but my question is, should I do it here on, in the United States or should I do it from Italy, where I am from? How long would I be stuck in Italy or how long would I be stuck here in Miami? Did, did she say what the second nationality she has or she just say Italian passport? Italian, uh, passport. Italian passport. Right. Italian so it depends on your second nationality. I, I uh, If you came from Italy, Esther, that's okay. I would adjust here provided the child is over 21 and also make sure that she makes at least 25,000, 24,000 or something so she can support you and her. If not, you need a joint sponsor. Esther does not mean you cannot adjust. Esther only means that you only have 90 days to stay in America because the child is over 21. That's an immediate relative case. Family one, you cannot do it, but immediate, yes. I would file for adjustment of status, but the issue is and the Trump is a 90-day rule. You're only allowed 90 days. So if I were you, I would find that 91st day, but then you became illegal for one day. So the question is, are you willing to take the risk? If you file within the 90 days, then the question is, did you have intent to do a change of status? Because then they would deny the green card. But absolutely, Esther, you can adjust status if the child is over 21. Yes, Ms. Wong, this person is adding, uh, being Italian, can I get an investment visa? Uh, yes. I have restaurants. Yes, Italian, you need, uh, you're talking about two things. There are two types of Italian, um, there are two types of uh, investment visa. One is the EB-5, you have to invest half a million. But if you're the same person as the child who has Esther, the child has to be over 21, uh, but you could, uh, E-Visa, I think it, Italy have an E-Visa. We have a list. And I don't have a list here, but I'm pretty sure Italy have an e-visa case. So you just, if not just Google, is Italian an e-visa um, country? I'm pretty sure it is. Yes. I'm trying, I am trying to check right now. Um, so I don't have my list here. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's let's go with the next question, and then I'll get back to this one so that we can have an answer uh, for this question. This uh, next person is um, saying the following. Um, what are the options for um, health, um, health programs or the health workers? Workers, health right. So uh, if you have a basis, like, for example, you already filed a worker uh, work permit under 
uh, your green card pending under asylum, under um, voluntary departure, there are different programs under TPS, under DED. You can, because you're a healthcare worker, you can push for the early approval, but you have to prove you are really healthcare. Hey, thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this answer. And don't forget that you can call the phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. That's the phone number that Ms. Wong, uh, that you can reach out to Ms. Wong and make an appointment. She actually will be in the city of Atlanta next Thursday, which is uh, February the 10th. She will be here in the city of Atlanta. Uh, Ms. Wong, uh, are you traveling to Nashville anytime soon? Uh, yes, I'll be in Atlanta uh, this Thursday, and I'll be in Nashville Friday. Okay, perfect. So on, in Nashville on the 11th of uh, February, she will be in the city of Nashville. So you can call the phone number is 216-279-3984. 216 Eight four. Uh, this next question says, um, "I filed the I one thirty about a year ago, and I still have no answer. Is there a way that I could uh, call immigration or the NBC and see what's going on with the case? Uh, I'm a, I'm filing for my wife. She's in Dominican Republic. I have the E visa list here. Italy has been an E visa country since 1949, uh, July 26, and you qualify for both E1 and E2. E1 is substantial business. E2 is investment. So investment, there are only two, also two types. If you're essential worker of an investment company that's registered, um, or you are the entrepreneur herself, himself. Or you have some, so your, if your Italian business have substantial business, then you also could qualify. You don't even have to in, uh, invest uh, money, but it has to have a substantial business. So congratulations, you are E2 country. I'm sorry. On this case, you filed the I-130. I don't know if the I-130 is a parent of uh, I-130 or spouse I-130. It's a spouse. Spouse, okay. So, uh, and where's the alien? Did he say if you are in America, you can actually file the in form? Dominican Republic, Ms. Wong. Okay, so yes, so a spousal case, uh, it should be approved within nine months to one and a half years. So it's normal as long as you got the receipt notice. But if you want to definitely file, uh, or if he's in healthcare, even though it is not a work permit, I would just uh, explain that, you know, it'd be nice that he come. But if not, I would just call in the lower left-hand corner of your receipt, there's a number you can call. And sometimes it's just a pain because it, you have to hold. When you call U.S. Department of State, you don't have to hold this. Sometimes it's still to hold. Uh, headquarters, you don't have to hold. But when you call those numbers, you hold. Uh, it's a pain. But if not, just go on the USCIS.gov. Um, they have uh, my account or stuff like that. You can ask them a question. Absolutely, it doesn't hurt to push. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, mm -hmm. for this answer. And don't forget, the phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Uh, well, this question, we already spoke about this question, Ms. Wong, but I guess this person is just joining us right now. I don't know if you want to repeat the answer or if you want to... Uh, ask this person to, to go back to the beginning of the video. Uh, my lover is in the United States, Ohio. I'm in Bangladesh. It's been years and he's supporting me financially. We never met yet. We're planning on meeting for the first time in my country and get married or engaged. Officially, we're not sure what to do. We would love to be together as soon as possible. Okay, so you are a what Marlene Rini. Is that a woman? It's a woman my lover is. So it may be a same sex marriage. Um, uh, this is and he, he is supporting me. Marlena may Marlene may be a woman, on it's, it's, it's a woman, it's a woman, but he is supporting me financially. So, my lover, my lover is a man, but and he is supporting me, but um, but. I don't see a problem. So if you want to marry, do the marriage case. If you don't want to marry, you can do a, um, a fiancé case. Fiancé case, you have to have met within the past two years. You've never met. So once you meet, you can do a fiancé. But if you plan to get married, um, you can do a marriage case. Same, same answer. 
Okay, perfect. So uh, please just uh, give us a call. The phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. You also can go back to the beginning of this uh, transmission and Ms. Wong gave a uh, longer answer to, to your question. So um, just give us a call, 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Eight four. Uh, this next person is asking um, about this H one B cases. What are the works or the kind of jobs that could help you file for H one B, and who can do it? The question is, H one B jobs are for professionals or specialty occupations. So it depends on what. So there's two components. What does the employer? What's the nature of business for the employer? If the employer is a, um, is a is a is a hospital, then they'll need technicians. They'll and technicians are not H one B, all right, because you don't require a bachelor's degree. Or if it's an orchestra, that is a musician. Or people does IT. IT needs H1B. Musicians, you could not do H1B. You can only do O1. So it depends on the nature of the business of the employer and what kind of job is provided and what kind of job they offer you. But on the foreign-born side, on the alien side, you need to look at your own degree. So for example, I have a, I just met with someone who have a math degree bachelor. So normally, if you only have a math degree, a lot of insurance company want to hire you and pays very well because they need math to look at risk level. You know, a little a point zero zero for a one risk means billions and millions of dollars loss in investment. Or and this lady that I met this morning also have a master's in statistics. So who needs to hire statistics, right? So people like Federal Express don't need statistics of you know how many. Uh, Postage comes from Bangladesh, how many? Um, and so that's H1B. So your degree has to coordinate with the job offer. So for example, your degree is MBA in finance, but the job offer is a CPA. Then how? why do I need uh, to hire an MBA in finance, even though you have an MBA, but CPA needs uh, the three testing part, but then you don't have the three testing. But if they only need a audit, then maybe we can require a finance in MBA. So these are the things that immigration will look at. Coming to the earlier question, I was thinking, that's why I'm a little bit uh, confused. Bangladesh is a very, um, it's a very conservative um, uh, country because it's very Muslim. And when it's a woman answering, the last name of that woman is Johnson. So, you know, it's not a Bangladeshi name. And then she also said, my lover. Normally, I do a lot of Bangladeshi cases. I do a lot of Pakistan cases. I also do a lot of Indian cases. Normally, we don't say my lover. And that name seems like a European or American name. That's why the question is just weird to me. So these are cases, as a good immigration lawyer, immediately you ask, are you that person or you're representing someone? Because the last thing you need, especially on investment visa, is to talk to the broker instead of talking to the real investor. Because then I could be... You know, I shouldn't tell you that, but I may be, have a bar issue. I may have an ethics issue with my bar association because as an investment, you're either the, the because also as a EB-5, because I'm only a lawyer, I'm not allowed to sell securities. There's a lot of ethics issues. So that question, that's why later I'm like, oh, you know, so these are, uh, whenever you do an intake, that's the first thing you look at. How old are the people? Are they same sex? Because Bangladesh, same sex, I mean, that's an asylum case, you know, because they don't like same sex. So these are things that you immediately start thinking. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for clarifying this question. And um, Yeah, we have a lot of cases, and I know that uh, it's... it's um, do you have seen... I would say a hundred thousand cases, maybe, maybe more. more. Oh my God! So Six hundred thousand. Yes, I, I don't know how many cases, but if if we file six thousand cases per year or more, right. then you can just add that. If we go to ten years, then it's sixty thousand cases. Uh, it's way more than two hundred thousand. 
you know, yeah. smell the faces. Yeah, and that's, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Because sometimes it's good to be more innocent and naive because you really need to believe in your own client. You believe the story, especially on asylum, you know, on work permits, you need to believe. On the other hand, though, if you're doing a marriage case, you don't, because you have a reputation with immigration, people are not stupid. If you keep coming in with nutty cases, immigration, once they look at your G28, which means I'm representing either the man, the woman, or both, they'll think, oh my gosh, the last 10 cases I did with this law firm, this problem, you know, I need to do NOID, I need to do RFV. Why should I try? They'll give me a 10 page RFV, they even call me and say, Margaret, did you know? I said, oh, I didn't know because I had actually a call from a, from a Vietnamese officer from New York and I'm living in Cleveland. And he, he was surprised that actually I speak fluent Chinese because most American lawyers, we don't. And then he said, do you know this? And I said, no, because I don't really read uh, Chinese news. It turned out the person we represent is a very, very famous actor and news person. And I didn't know that. And then it turned out there's some other issues with the pregnancy with another person. And then he asked, did you know that? And I really don't think he's right to even tell me. He probably thinks he's a lawyer. I don't know what he's thinking. So yeah, I was I mean, laughing, you know, yeah. so, oh my gosh. Yeah, that's true. Um, Ms. Wong, I actually had a question, very interesting question a few days ago, because there is a person that wants to get married to uh, gay friend. I mean, it's like same sex uh, couple, but she's pregnant. Um, it, that would maybe be a big issue for for immigration, right? Like, if you if you are a woman and you are trying to marry a woman, why are you pregnant? That's a good question. But I would even go deeper. I would ask when did she came out. Did she plan on this baby with this woman? Uh, because sometimes, because women have no sperms, maybe both of them went to get this, to buy a sperm from another person, or they contract with a sperm donor to do the sperm. So I would even go deeper. How long have they known each other? And a lot of, especially Bangladeshi women, or, you know, um, Pakistan woman, even Indian woman, we don't we don't tell people. We are embarrassed. So you ask, are you on social media? How did you? How do you go around meeting other people? Because if you have, when I'm saying if I'm same sex, I would like to meet different people like me, right? It's just like I'm Chinese, so I would like people to uh, to know us. I'm a lawyer, so I like you know. So where do you meet them? Do you dress like a girl at night? Because we win a lot of those cases, especially in San Francisco. So, uh, or do you dress like a man or do you normally dress like a man? Do you buy men's clothes? And, you know, these are visible because one of the asylum law is you have to be, you have to look different. How do people know you're gay? Because you don't, you look so, so normal. I mean, it sounds horrible. Uh, you look so straight, right? Straight, right. Um, metrosexual, right? Yeah. So thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for clarifying all of these questions. And this is uh, stuff that people don't think about, uh, but you have handled all of these cases over these 45 years. So if I would need an attorney, I would call you and I would tell you, Ms. Wong, I trust you. I know that you will be doing a good job for my case and I would love for you to handle my case. So if that's your case, please give us a call. The phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Attorney Margaret W. Wong with over 45 years of experience. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, and see you next week. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you please give us a call. The phone number is 216-279-3984. Offices in nine cities of the United States, Atlanta, Chicago, Columbus, Cleveland, Memphis, Minneapolis, Nashville, New York, and Raleigh, North Carolina. And the phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984.